So this is jammed, this is jammed, this is also jammed, and it broke. Hey there, I'm your host, Lissawi, and in today's video, we will be creating a lockpicking system like Skyrim. So let me show you what you're in for. Now behind me, we have a door, so if I press E to open it, we get this because it's locked. Now on the top left, you can see a value minus 64, and now this is the unlock value. And with that said, there is a margin error tolerance. So this could be, let's say, minus 44. And this value of tolerance, you can set yourself. So minus 64 should be around here. There we are. Now let's say it was a little bit less. We still get to open it, right? And then, of course, if it doesn't get opened, it will break the lock. And we start all over again. And with this, we can then open it. So with that said, let's begin. Before we begin, we are going to need a lockpicking set. Now, of course, you can go ahead and create this in Unreal Engine with some basic shapes. But if you want a lockpicking set, now I have created one in Blender real quickly. It's not the best, but it's there. So if you want to get these files, I'll have them on my Patreon if you want to support me. And I'll also link something in the description below that you can get on Sketchfab or something like that. So with that out of the way, Let's go ahead and first of all, create a interaction system. So on the top left in settings, let's go here, go to project settings. And we'll start off by creating a trace channel, a custom trace channel. Let's call this our interactive, interactive, did I spell this right? I think I did. Okay, so go to ignore and accept. With that, then we can create a new folder called interaction. So new folder, interaction. And let's open this up. Now in here, we want to create right click and go to blueprints, blueprint interface. And let's call this BPI underscore interaction. Let's open this up. And in here, we want to create two functions, one for interacting and one for the display message if you want to have one there. <clears throat> so Let's do interact with, and in here you don't need this, but it's always good to have it. This will be the interactor, and this will be of type actor, so actor object reference. And we can go ahead and create a look at function, which I don't think we will use, but um, yeah, if we're not using it, then maybe we don't need it there. So just the interact with um, will do for now. And with that done, let's compile and save it. So let's go ahead and right click once again and go to blueprint class and create a actor component. Let's call this BPC underscore interaction. And let's open it up. In here then, we want to create a function for our interaction trace. So let's call it that interaction trace. Now in here, you can use a line trace, a sphere trace, completely up to you. So what I'll do is I'll do a sphere trace by channel. Now for the start location, we will do get owner. And we want to get the owner's uh, location. So get actor location. And out again from get owner, we'll do get um, actor forward vector is what we want. With that, then we want to multiply this by a value. And this is how um, how many units in front of the player this will go to. So right click on the bottom pin and you can either convert it to a single float or a double. Does not really matter. And I'll do something like 800. So play around with this value. Then from the actor's location, we'll do a plus and we want to add these values together. And this will go into the end. And the start is simply the actor's location. Now for the radius, again, we'll play around with this if we don't like it, but I'll set it to 50. For the trace channel, it's set to visibility by default. We can change it to interactive. Now, if you don't see this, simply compile your project and then it should show up. With that, I'll do to the draw debug type. We can do for one frame just for the testing purposes. And with that, then we'll grab a branch. So left mouse and B to get a branch. And the out hit will do a break. And we're interested in the hit actor. So grab this, promote to a variable, and we'll call it target actor. Okay. 
we then also want to check does this hit actor does implement interface because if it doesn't well we don't want to promote it to a variable because it's not what we're looking for so if it does great we'll grab a second branch look it into true and then of course it's promoted now if it's false we set it to nothing and we can also set it to nothing here as well and then like in my other tutorials i would have the interact message and all that but for the purpose of this we don't really need it okay so i think that's all in here let's compile and save this and next we can create a custom event and this will be called our begin trace so in here we'll do a set timer by event and this is how often you want this sphere trace to run now i find it very good to run at point two so that's what i'll use we'll make this looping and then from the red event here we'll do a custom event once again and we'll call it update trace and simply grab your function you just made interaction trace plug it in there and we're good and let's also comment this our um trace um interaction trace trace perfect and we can do show bubble okay next let's go ahead and actually start this on our event begin play so in here we want to grab this event right there so begin trace and just like that we have our component set up so let's compile and save it next let's go ahead and actually create the inputs for interacting and lockpicking so in the content drawer go to your third person character inputs actions right click and go to input input action and let's call it ia underscore interact or interaction whichever you prefer once again right click go to inputs input action and we'll call this ia underscore lock picking save both then go a folder back open up your imc in here create a new mapping let's do interaction first and a key of your choice i'll have it on e once again, new mapping, we'll select our lock picking this time. And in here, I'll actually have four inputs. So we'll have the W, A, S, and D. So when you're happy, save everything, go back. And with this done, I believe, <clears throat> we can go ahead and create a, a door actor. So let's go to content right click new folder and let's call it door and let's open this up now in here we want to create a blueprint class of type actor calling it bp underscore door or door base if this is your if you'll have more doors and let's open this up in here then i want to add two static meshes one for the door frame and one for the actual door so let's do door frame Select this, do another static mesh, and we'll call it door, like so. Okay, so since I have added the starter pack, I'll have the doors in here. So if I type in frame, should show up, door frame, like this. And we then wanna click on the door mesh and do door. Um, so this won't actually align for you perfectly. So what you have to do is go in here and select five, and now it will. Now, another thing with this is we want to go in here and type in collision. Make sure it's the door you're selecting, not the frame. And for collision presets, we'll do custom collision and we want to block the interactive channel like so. Now, this door actually does not have any collision, even though we can set this. So I don't know why this is like that, but to fix it, simply click on your door, click on the folder here beside the mesh and it will bring you to the actual mesh of it. So open this up. And if you go to collision, we can add a box, simplified collision, and boom, there we have it. So now this door has a collision and let's save that. So with this out of the way, if we select the door again and press E, we can rotate this door. And I want this door to rotate to about a hundred. So we'll go from zero to a hundred on the what? Rotation Z axis. So with that, let's go to the event graph. And in here, we want to create a timeline for the animation of the door. So search for timeline like so. 
and let's call it our door timeline and let's open it up in here then the length means how long the animation is i'll set it to one second of course play around with this and then we want to create a new track add float track for the name again doesn't really matter but we'll do door time line you would then want to right click add key to curve float now for the time we're starting at zero so this will be zero make sure to hit enter and for the value once again zero and we'll hit enter you then want to right click again add key to curve float now for the time this is the length so one there and for the value we'll have one as well just like so so this is our animation timeline so let's compile and then we want to create an event so we'll do custom event and let's call it use door like so and let's create a variable we want to create a variable is open so if the door is open we'll do get we'll do a not boolean so if the door is not open we then get a branch well if it's not open we're going to open it and vice versa if it's opened well then we're going to close it so false will go to oops let's also set this first set to is open to be true and then is open to be false so we'll then open it and if not we'll reverse this we then want to grab a lerp You then want to grab the a value and put it into alpha like so and this is our starting location or rotation so zero this will be on the x-axis by the way and like i said we'll do 100 as we could have seen earlier if we click on the door and press e to rotate it goes to 100 or i like it at 100. with that then we want to grab this door mesh not the frame the door and we want to do a set relative rotation and split this open and we'll plug this value into z so on update we do that like so we can also create another variable in here which will be determining is the door locked or not so is locked with this variable we want to go on the right hand side and do instance editable so this will allow us to set it in the actual game port let's compile and save this we then want to go to class settings and add our interaction. So BPI underscore interaction. And whenever we interact with this door, we want to check um, is it locked or not. So we'll do get is locked. We'll do again a not boolean. So if it's not locked, do a branch. And I just do it to come out of true. You don't have to get this, but then you'll be coming out of false. So um, if the door is open, well, then we'll do use door and if it's not well then in here we'll be creating that lock actor so for now we'll do this and let's actually comment our code so we'll do um opens and closes door like so and let's then compile and save this and um to test this we need to add this interaction to our player. So go to your content drawer, go into your third person character, blueprints, third person character, and in here we'll do BPC, which should find for us the interaction. And just like so, we have this now. So if I play, it should trigger and it does. Amazing. Um, let's grab our door, smack it right in the middle there, and we can see we have this variable option is locked. So we want to leave it open for now just to test if this door actually works. And it doesn't because, so the reason we can't open the door just yet is because I have forgotten to add a part in our interaction component. So in here, we want to grab our IA underscore interact input action and whenever we interact with the object we want to grab our target actor do a validated get like so and if this is valid then what we'll do is we'll do a interact with message 
And then interactor is of course the get owner. It's not necessary, but let's put it in there. And just like that, oh, my cat is here. Uh, we'll do a input for interaction, like so. And let's do show bubble. So let's compile that. And if we go ahead and test this out now, it should work. And it does. So opens and closes just like this. Perfect. Now, if we go ahead and lock this, so is locked. So let's quickly do a print string as well in our door. So if it's locked for the moment, we'll have a print string saying door is locked. Compile and save that. Go and play. And boom, says door is locked. So that works. So now that we know it works, let's go ahead and disable this trace thing so it doesn't show up on the screen. So in our interaction, interaction trace, let's just do none. That way, if we play, we don't actually see that and we still can access the door. Well, it's locked, but it works. So this will be it for part one. In the next video, we'll be creating the lock actor itself. And with that, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.